Hi everyone, welcome to EBCO's Executive Trend Book Club for September 2019. We are so happy to have you today. And here's our book, The Modern Enneagram. So hopefully most of you got to dig into it a little bit, at least for your own interest. If not, we still have plenty to share with you, uh, regardless of your expertise in this space. We love how it digs into understanding mindsets and understanding what motivates millennials and Gen Z, which is a hot topic for us here at EBCO and everyone that we work with wants to know about these things. So we're really excited to bring this topic with, uh, to, uh, to our book club with you here today. So we are going to turn on our screen and dig in. If you have any questions, please ask it in the chat box. We'll have some polls per usual, which we love getting your interactions. Um, and here we go. All right, so about EBCO, some of you are new, so welcome. This is a milestone book club for us. We have been doing this for a year now, and it is so exciting because we get all of these amazing new connections. We have a growing group of innovation and marketing professionals who are joining us every single time. It continues to grow, so we're happy to share this with you today. And if you ever have feedback or you're inspired by a book or a topic that you think would be good for us, please, we love high interaction. So thank you for joining us. We're down here in Austin, Texas. It's still pretty warm down here. Um, and for those of you who haven't met us before, we are a consulting firm that serves as the go-to resource for trends that inspire new products, new technologies, new business models, new categories. And we work for all kinds of clients across all major categories. And this is our passion project book club. So welcome. Now I want to know who out there has taken the Enneagram. This is our very first poll of the day to kick us off. Have you taken the Enneagram? Let's see the response from our audience. This will be really fascinating. And we should preface this by saying that if you haven't had a chance to take it, we're going to be giving out 10 tests later on this call. And it's no problem at all because part of the reason we wanted to explore this topic is really to dive into mindsets of consumers. So we can think about this through a personal lens and what type we might be, but also through the consumer lens and how we can innovate based on different personality types. Yes, I love that. And I love the response from our audience. This makes this even more exciting. 65% of you said, no, you have not taken the Enneagram. So not only is that great for the giveaway, but that is great for inspiring you. You might want to take it after this. So why yeah. this book? Oh, and I was going to say, if anyone is open to sharing their type, please type it in the chat box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be really fun to learn some of your types. I'm a type seven. This is Erin speaking. Kaylin, what type are you? So for those of you that don't know the type yet, seven is enthusiast. So that may be why you hear excitement in Erin's voice most of the time. <laughs> 24 hours a day. Uh, I am, I am um, undecided, which usually means you're type four individualist because it means that you feel like you don't fit into any bucket. <laughs> so That's exactly right. So why this book? We chose this book because as a lot of you know, there's tons of interest with millennials and centennials. And what's interesting about millennials now is it's a super hyper aware generation who's really getting to know themselves, but they're on the verge of turning 40. So their lives are on a roll. A lot of them, they're established, they're in their careers. And so what does it mean to understand your type? And how does that not only impact your personal life and your home environment and your work career, but how does it impact the brands that you are enthusiastic about and the brands that you want to be a part of and the products and services that interest you? So that's what's really cool about millennials. And then centennials are just a whole new generation up and coming. They've lived their entire life with this hyper technology and being hyper connected. And so really turning the lens in on themselves and thinking about what does it mean to be me? Who am I in this world of over communication. And so that's a really interesting lens that we can start thinking about consumers. And so the more we talk about trends and interesting, relevant ways to connect with these markets, the more we were becoming passionate about the Enneagram. We actually brought it in house here at EBCO and all of our employees take the Enneagram and it gives us a great conversation piece for there's some jovial moments mm -hmm. and making fun of each other and laughing it out. But there's also some really deep learnings about how to communicate with one another and how to be the most successful versions of ourselves. So as big fans of it, we brought this book to you. Um, and also, you'll probably hear out in pop culture, you might hear in an interview on a talk show or someone who is on a podcast say something like, I'm a one or I'm a seven. If that might have flown by you if you weren't aware of the Enneagram, but I'm pretty sure you're going to start catching it out there right now. And it'll have a lot more meaning, especially if you connect to a celebrity or a personality that has your same Enneagram type, there'll be this, uh, this sort of connection. So that's a really cool element to it as well. And this is cool. We see a lot of people typing in the different types that they are. So what's pretty interesting is if you think about the group we have assembled here, a lot of you work on different forms of innovation, whether it's innovation for R&D, 
thinking about different ways to market to a consumer, maybe you're innovating products and pretty much, I mean, there's a pretty even spread just in the short amount of responses that we have. So what we learned about Enneagram and Aaron will talk more about this, but that it's what motivates you. So it doesn't mean that we're not all potentially high achieving individuals on this call right now. We've obviously, um, you know, apply innovation to our roles, but that we're all doing it maybe from a different lens of what truly motivates us or interests us at the end of the day. Yeah. And just looking at everyone responding, we have everything here. We have achievers, we have individualists, we have threes with a wing of four. So everything is going on here. And if you haven't done it, stay tuned until the end. We are giving away 10 codes. And if you win a code and you've already taken it, maybe pass it to a coworker or a partner or someone important in your life, they'll they'll have a blast with it. So definitely stay tuned till the end. All right, so who invented the Enneagram? No one, it was invented on Instagram. It's an <laughs> ancient system, some celebrity, or Brene Brown, which is kind of funny. Brene Brown is awesome, a very inspirational researcher that um, we, we follow personally. So I just wanna throw that in there. And it's interesting her research, how she talks about so many interesting, interesting things about what motivates us. All right, so it looks like most of you do have an understanding that this is in fact an ancient system. Yeah, so the Enneagram has been around for a really long time, which it's kind of interesting how it really resurged in popularity recently. Yeah, absolutely. It's sort of that nostalgic, but not because it's ancient. Yeah, so <laughs> it goes way back. So this is an ancient collection of knowledge about the nine ways of seeing the world. It comes from the Greek words ennea, which is nine, and gramos, which is written symbol. And each number on the Enneagram represents a different lens through which a person may view the world. And this world is influenced by what motivates that number. And as innovation professionals and marketing professionals, there's nothing more profound than finding a way to motivate individuals to engage with us in, a, in terms of our products, our services, or even our brand, brand engagement and content. So understanding that true motivation, and since this has taken over consumers by storm, there's just such an interesting connection here. And I think that's why we've personally become a bit obsessed with it. So why is the topic so interesting? The roots of this are unclear, but it you know, goes 100 years back. It's not so much a niche topic anymore. The influence and vocabulary has spread and become part of pop culture. And that's why I mentioned earlier, someone is going to say, I'm a seven, I'm a three, I'm a four. Um, and so we really see this taking hold and pervasive around culture right now. Um, it talks about maximum efficiency and constantly achieving and accomplishing goals at all times. And so we'll get into this in a little bit, but this generation is really about who am I? How can I accomplish the best version of myself? How can I be most effective in the version of I am and offer that to organizations and to my life and find success? So really understanding how people see the world is why this topic is so interesting right now to really pull in that individuality in a world where we're so tech connected and sometimes we feel lost in the mix. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting because it also mirrors a lot of what we're seeing in the food and beverage and wellness space around optimization. So we're constantly trying to optimize our health, our wellness, our lives. We're constantly trying to just have a better version of ourselves. So that's why the Enneagram is so popular. Even though we're all so different, we all have these different motivations that are driving us to achieve the best version of ourselves or to have the best relationships. And I think at the end of the day, everyone can relate to wanting to optimize or wanting more improvement. So that's why this has become so popular on channels like Instagram, where people will post their Enneagram type, and then talk about why that influences them to either engage with the brand or maybe a decision they made or how they handled a pain point in their life. Yeah. And something interesting Kayla and I were talking about was can brands and products and large companies connect to the different Enneagram types based on what they, mo what motivates them? Or would it be interesting? I guess this could be an and, or can a brand be an Enneagram type? Mm -hmm. Can a brand be a seven and, you know, find ways to understand the language of a one or a three or an eight, mm. but really, you know, embolden that seven archetype. So there's just so many ways to, to mix this in our minds right now, but it really is a fun thing to think about. So in pop culture, as we mentioned, this is really why Enneagram has become so popular lately is that we see just some macro trends really converging with the Enneagram. So there's trends around self-awareness. So this idea that as digitization increases, we start to have a better knowledge of ourselves. Some of this you may have seen in the health and wellness space where we can take these home diagnostic tests now and know everything about our gut health, our brain health, our hormone health. 
But then also this idea that now we can take all these self-awareness tests and all of these, you know, it kind of goes out of the workplace, but things that are like personal assessments that can help us understand how we're going to be able to motivate ourselves better. Um, I think also we have another convergence of trends from the entrepreneurship culture that's really taken hold. So as tech becomes such a bigger force of our lives, we're just seeing a more cross convergence of smaller companies. And what that's allowed is that people just have, they're getting really to the root of what motivates them and really understanding how to explain themselves and how to self brand. That's why a lot of times when, if you see influencers on Instagram, they talk about kind of what makes up their core personality. I just saw somebody the other day that talked about like, they're a biohacker, they're a natural beauty blogger, and they're a drug seller, and they're an entrepreneur. So it's this idea of like, what's a shortcut to get somebody to really understand who we are? And then what are those different buckets? And so we're seeing that that's a really fun way for people now to self-identify. And as you learn more about yourself, it's also just fun to learn things about yourself that you might not have become aware of because it's subconscious patterns that are happening. And so there's this high degree of self-awareness that's happening. Part of it's being driven by the spirituality movement, where as people become less religious, they're kind of moving to this modern spirituality movement where you're sort of in charge of dictating your positivity through the day and you're in charge of motivating yourself and in charge of kind of getting yourself out of bed and what your mindset is of the world. And so that's why we're seeing so much interest in influencers that focus on Enneagram, but also just this, this culture really emerging around self-awareness and self-definement. So these are two that I would recommend if you have not seen these on Instagram before, but there's Enneagram and coffee. So this is one of my favorite ones. And once you start following her, you'll see your type come up. She does a lot of charts around the different types and how it might relate to either a literary figure or a celebrity. It also has different things that might happen in the day of a life of a certain Enneagram type. So it just shows how you might react to certain situations. And they're kind of funny. Some of them, I, I have to say, like, I don't personally relate to, but then other ones you're like, wow, that does sound just like me. So it's pretty interesting and could be a really fun way to think of micro-targeting or different ways into um, different individuals that are motivated by different things. Um, and you can also see the other one on the right. Um, they kind of break up the different types and different charts and just different ways to understand different aspects of your personality. Yeah, and I'm seeing some comments in here talking about brands that do have personality. Of course, they have personality. People purchase brands for personality. So something for us all to think about. Um, and someone mentioned that when it shows up on Tinder, you know that it's having its moment. So very, very good point there. <laughs> all right. So why is this topic so interesting to us at EBCO? And it, the reason is, is because the way we research consumers is changing because the way we connect with them is changing. And the reason that we're talking about it this way is because think about how studying the consumer has evolved. So traditional segmentation is all about demographics, age and ethnicity, family size, income, and a whole slew of other factors that as consumer insight experts, we've all been studying for a long time. You know, what group does this? This goes back 30, 40, 50 years when we're thinking about this segmentation. And we're saying that that next stage is psychographics and lifestyle. So calling someone something like a new mom or a young professional, you know, or someone who just left college and is starting their life. We talk about tech adoption. Is this a Luddite or is this an early adopter? That's been a factor that we've talked a lot about. We've talked about their career path in terms of psychographics. Is this someone who wants to feel accomplished in their career goals and climb the ladder as someone who is just looking for something to maintain a routine and a level of life that they've put out for themselves, what types of jobs and day parts exist for this person and how can we make sure that we're addressing these. And we're saying there's now this next level and this is so important and so interesting and it's, uh, it's critical essentially to attracting and maintaining your relationship with consumers now. And this is thinking about their mindset, their motivation, what their life goals are. And we have down there best life and spirituality. So best life is when you think of your consumer, whether you're putting your shoes, your feet in their shoes, <laughs> not their shoes on, however you want to say it, uh, or you're thinking about what makes them feel like they are living their best life. And if you use that lens and you think about the mindset, the motivation, and what empowers this person to reach their life goals, you're really starting to understand your consumer. You're really starting to understand that person that we're speaking to. And that's how we've seen this evolution of consumer behavior. And when we do our trend investigations, this is something that 
we heavily think about is the trends, not only about the products and services that people are evangelizing and the way that they're living their life, but also the reasons behind it. Why? Why is this happening? And how is this going to evolve over time? How is it going to take shape as their life goals change or these new movements of feeling empowered? And Caitlin's going to go into some really cool examples of brands that make people have this feeling. Um, and then spirituality is there too, because we're seeing more and more around spirituality defined in so many different ways, but does it speak to me deep in my soul? And so when we start to think about these different factors moving past what type of career am I living or what's my demographic data, how old am I, how much money do I make, and we start to think about these different elements, here's a real good outline of things that you can start plugging into your consumer insight work when it comes to recruiting and getting a good panel mm -hmm. to speak with or when, it thinks, when you start thinking about trends and the types of different people that you want to target and produce products and services for, you start considering what does it mean to have balance in their life? What type of mindset does this individual have? What do they care about when it comes to self-awareness and who they are as an individual? Is an individual. What does spirituality mean to them? How do they define their strengths? And con in contrast to that, what are their weaknesses? What does it mean to live their best life? When it comes to the universe, there's a lot of that. For some people, thinking about the universe in these two generations could have to do with the more traditional role of God in some religions. But for others, it's this energy and this power that they're feeling in terms of the way they're living their life and where they put their energy and their thinking and their thoughts is what comes to fruition and the things that come to them. And are there products and services that can help support people in this in this space. So following your inner self and thinking about energetically how to balance your life and live the best version of yourself. So I would definitely consider these elements and these traits when you're recruiting consumers or thinking about consumers and developing messaging to market to new consumers. These are some really important elements that we're seeing. Yeah. An interesting thing about energy. So one of the tests that we actually take at EBCO is called the Colby and it's how your brain instinctively wants to take action and one of the things that you learn is that there's just certain things that are going to tire you out faster. So if you've ever heard the analogy that we all start out with a certain amount of energy throughout the day, and depending on how you deplete that energy, you could be wiped out by 3 p.m. Or you could be feeling energized as you're going to bed and you're still feeling like you just had a really great day. And so what's interesting about that is that how people spend their energy sort of feeds into the Enneagram in terms of motivation and mindset. So if you're thinking about a product like a meal kit, as an example, Someone might feel like they love the energy of feeling inspired by recipes and ingredients and, you know, cooking it is no problem for them. Where other people, maybe they get their excitement out of actually shopping for those products at the store and planning for their family and taking care of them. So that's what we're talking about. We talk about motivations and how people use their energy differently. And so that's why different brands may appeal to similar types or they might not resonate with someone just based on how they want to spend their energy and also what motivates them at the end of the day. Great. So let's dig into some topics that really bring this to life. So I'm really excited to share this. So I'm, I'm kind of getting made fun of in the office for being a Rachel Hollis groupie, but she actually is someone that has two New York Times bestsellers. If you haven't seen her before, you'll probably see her now at the airport or Target. Um, so she has two bestselling books that are called Girl Stop Apologizing and I think it's called Girl Wash Your Face. But what's been so interesting about her is she's really hitting at a peak time and really converging with a lot of other trends that are making consumers really interested in her. Um, she has best selling books on mindset and goal setting. She also has a life coaching, business coaching program that teaches people how they can become more motivated in certain aspects of their life. She has a last 90 days program, so making the most out of the last 90 days of the year, which actually is a, you can sign up for that. I think that's ongoing right now. Um, and then she's also known for, she has these Rise Women's Conferences where she has a whole curated storefront of gear that says things like hustle, um, you know, it it sucks and it, that's how you know it's worth it. That's how you know that you're actually making a difference in your life. And so you can see some of her five to thrive principles over there, but she's really resonating right now with a lot of consumers. She has a massive fan base, um, has sold out stadiums. And I think it really is indicative of this this motivational trend we're seeing right now where people are really grasping on to how to define themselves, how to self-motivate. And we just see that mirrored throughout, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're looking for a new fitness goal in your life, but we're just, there's so much ethos in this area right now. And I think it really ties in with the Enneagram and what consumers are looking for, which is that inspiration. 
And I'd be curious in the chat box if any of you have heard of Rachel Hollis or read her book. The next one I'll talk about is Saqqara Life. So this is a really interesting one, just talking about what motivates people. They have a whole visual food program. So everything is really designed to inspire you before you eat it. They had a whole program last year called Eat Pretty, where they talked about just how visually aesthetic food is. And people do not do this because they're looking to save money. I mean, these programs are, are pretty expensive, but people really do it because they really believe in the brand's mission and how they talk about food. It's not just something that you're eating for pure function. You're also doing it for your spirit, for your energy, to have positive vibes. So a lot of times their products will also come with a quote. They have a best-selling book on eating food that you personally love. And how like when you kind of add this positive vibration to things that you're doing, you're just going to seek that same energy out in the world. So you can see a lot of this gets into the, you know, slightly woo-woo territory for some of us, but I think we can all relate to that everyone has a certain energy they carry with them. And these brands are trying to pick up on that and trying to inspire their base of consumers. Yeah. And just a side note, that book's been on Oprah's list. So in terms of spread culturally, once you make Oprah's list and they've won some other awards as well, you know <laughs> that. Um, it's taking off. It's not something that's niche anymore. Yeah, and this is cool. So some people are are saying that they're actually going to rise Chicago. So Gail said that. Um, Aaron and I, we actually we do a lot of, as you can imagine, kind of individual trend hunting and wanting to immerse ourselves in experiences so we can intelligently speak to it. We're going to rise in Florida in 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 February. If anyone else is going, or I think it's in January. Um, and somebody else mentioned yes, Rachel Hollis is a rock star. My wife is a big fan. I think if anyone hasn't heard of her, um, if you are to read her book or kind of seek her out after this, I think a lot of us are big fans just because of how passionate she is. But you can definitely pick on this larger macro trend movement that's happening around mindset and motivation when you listen to her content. Yeah. So even if she doesn't fully motivate or resonate with you personally, you'll have a really good understanding of a broader segment of the population that resonates with this type of content and belief system. Definitely. The next one is Bando. So this is one of our, our ones that we've been watching for a few years now. We just happen to love their branding and their spirit that they have behind it. They're, I guess you could call them a cross between a paper good office supply slash millennial e-commerce brand. And they're all about inspiration and motivation. And what's really interesting about their founder is she actually talks about suffering from anxiety and depression and how we should really destigmatize those topics, but also try to lift each other up. And so she's been a huge thought leader in that space. And a lot of the products are around these like little notes or moments that you can have throughout the day to really self-empower yourself. And I think that's when we think of this modern spirituality movement, it is really about empowering yourself and giving yourself a boost throughout the day. You can see on the right, it's not the normal like, um, you know, oh, we're sad type quotes. It's like things of like, first of all, you're really pretty or you are the star, you are the galaxy. So just really pumping someone up and it really mirrors a lot of the social media trends we're seeing as well and finding those to be into a product format. Right. So we study consumers through this lens because it's what matters to them. And on the left, consumers don't think of themselves as an age or a diet conscious person. I'm putting air quotes right now that you can't see. A tech savvy <laughs> shopper. They think more about personal awareness, my beliefs, my motivations. And they ask themselves, what do I connect with? And that's really what we're seeing when consumers are embracing these brands there's almost this first path of, am I connected to the brand and a, an assessment of the product second, mm -hmm. because there's so many products out there now across so many categories that it's not just needs based. It's a lot mm -hmm. of belief system and what draws me in based on what motivates me. Yeah. We were just talking about this other, the other day about like, you know, when do we kind of feel like we're overexposed to a brand? And we were saying that we feel like when a brand or a thought leader or an influencer is giving us something that is valuable to us or something that I feel I can use throughout my day, that I don't feel like I'm being like too, too over-programmed or getting too much content sent to me. And I think that's important because when we think of the lens of what might help a consumer in terms of their own awareness or their own beliefs or their own motivations throughout the day, then I feel like that's where brands are winning or even thought leaders are winning because they're ultimately helping that person make decisions or helping them feel inspired and so they don't feel like a brand's just marketing or advertising at them anymore, but they're really kind of on this thought leadership path where they're educating them and giving them some nugget that they're going to be able to take with them. And I think we see that mirrored in a lot of the Enneagram content, as well as if you do follow Rachel Hollis, I think she does a great job of exposing people to things that they actually want to know. So then they want to follow her in return. 
So now you're probably asking yourselves, how do I action on this? What motivates consumers in my specific industry? And what is the relationship between mindset, motivation, self-awareness, and our product and category? And we're going to dig into some of that in just a second here. And it's, it's all about the world being different for this generation. They have too many inputs. They have to find themselves and they have to figure out what matters to them. And the reason about the reason that knowing who you are on the inside and what matters to you most is so important is because it's something that technology cannot take from you. And I think there's a reason as we become more over digitized and over programmed, there's a reason all of us are trying to self identify. That's why when you read a social media profile, there's so much terminology now that people use to describe themselves. There's so many subgroups you can be a part of. There's so many ways to classify your own interests. And part of that is because we're just so exposed to content now that we can be such a varied, um, specialized individual. And so that's what we're seeing also. There's actually been a lot of great articles recently on cognitive overload and cognitive burden, which if you've ever talked to us about nootropic trends, we're pretty obsessed about brain science and what we're going to have to do essentially to keep up with computers soon. And so I think it's interesting, just this notion of what defines us as humans is inherent to what technology can't take away from us. And obviously there's so many benefits to technology. I don't, I don't think we're thinking of it us versus them type statements yet, but I think it's just an interesting concept that maybe digitization is pushing us to this point where we do have to self-define ourselves to the point where it is all about motivating or inspiring ourselves and understanding what makes us human at the end of the day, which is all these different traits that are very qualitative in nature. All right, so now what we've all been waiting for, let's dig into these nine Enneagram types. This is going to be a high-level intro. You all have the book. Um, if not, obviously, the internet has endless information on it. But let's dig into these nine types. So what motivates number one? These are called the perfectionist or the reformer, and they are constantly aware of how things can be improved or perfected, and they can see things in black and white and are concerned with being accurate and correct. And I'm sure we all know number ones, Number ones are highly effective in the workplace and for uh, organizing and setting processes. Mm -hmm. They're perfectionists. So I'm married to a number one. So it was really interesting to <laughs> learn that and kind of learn what motivates him at the end of the day. But you can see these pictures like order, like cleanliness, like balance, kind of knowing where something stops and ends. Um, they have a eye for detail. They're willing to go the extra mile. They tend to be great team players because they're mission driven. And they also help set standards. So potential challenges is that they can struggle with perfectionism, both inward and outward. They can expect too much from themselves or from the people they work with. Um, but to be their best selves at work, it's about cultivating a stance of acceptance towards workplace reality. So understanding that things are going to be complex, that we are going to need to be collaborative, and that it's okay to maybe have to change a process if it's not going quite the way you would want with a diverse group of people. So for anyone who gets this um, Enneagram type, we'd love to hear um, after you take the test. All right, the number two, the helper. They love to care for those around them. They're very aware of others' feelings and needs. These people might be on the more emo side. They're very feeling and empathetic, and they're gentle and kind to, the, to those around them. Yeah, so for a brand, this might be a brand that comes across as more empathetic, maybe very emotionally intelligent, emotionally considering all the different consumers that you're engaging with, but also how to cultivate that relationship in a really thoughtful way and go the extra mile to show the people or show the consumers that you're targeting that well, how much you actually mean to them. Um, so this would come across as potentially a more loving, guided approach versus maybe in a more assertive or confrontational approach. All right, number three, the achiever. We actually have a couple of these in our office. They're hardworking, they're competitive, they're high performing. They like to be successful, they like to move fast, they like to focus on the future. You can imagine um, brand personalities around automotive or being the best in a category, um, really mm -hmm. high performance. I think actually a lot of brands fall into this. If we were to classify each brand as an Enneagram type, I think Achiever does come across a lot in tech or comes across a lot in, as Aaron mentioned, automotive companies where you have to be the best. You have to be hardworking, high performing. Even Detroit, where um, I'm from, there's so uh, much language around Detroit, Detroit hustles the hardest, um, no one, no, everyone but Detroit or no one but Detroit. So there's a lot of slogans around how hard they actually work to stay ahead and what they're doing to kind of get back on track. And so they're really exemplifying this persona type. 
All right, the number four, the individualist. We actually have a couple individualists as well. And this is where we get a lot of creativity. This is creative. Uh, this is values, authenticity, also often called the romantic for being sensitive and expressive. So you can imagine this is a really individualist, well, it's called individualist, but a very, um, you know, empowered by their thoughts and their vision for things and really wanting people to understand um, their perspective through a creative lens. Yeah, so this one was funny because I think I mentioned this when we first started the call, but I got a tie between um, this type three and then I think seven was my third one. And what they were saying is if you can't self-identify with any of them, you're probably the individualist because you feel like you don't fit into any of the categories. Um, so this one's been kind of funny for our team to make fun of me that <laughs> this is indeed my Enneagram type. Anytime she says something we don't understand, we're like, oh, individualist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so number five, the investigator is motivated by the need to gather information in order to feel more security about the world around them. So you can imagine, even from a messaging perspective, to address people who have this need for more information to make decisions or to even cross into engaging with the brand or product or something that's new to market that people don't understand, it could definitely be an opportunity to, in some format, in some way or another, provide that extra bit of information to inform consumers about how to interact with the product or service. Yeah, we actually came across the brand that I think exemplifies this called Seed Probiotic. And they're an e-commerce company that has probiotics formulated for both men and women. Their website goes so much into the science behind the product and how they were like a whole team that came together and came across this innovation and way to create this probiotic to get the maximum benefit. So there's just information overload on that website. Like you could go to town if you were really wanted to investigate why this is the best product for you. Um, so it's pretty interesting. I think this could fall into a science lens. So any beauty brands that slant towards a clinical approach or talking about a biotech story and really giving all the details about, you know, even with the meat industry right now, how you're cultivating those cells. So this is a pretty interesting approach that I actually think we do see a lot of brands taking right now with science. All right, the intro to type six, the loyalist, is motivated by the desire to maintain security through community and relationships. Yeah, so loyalists is interesting. We've actually seen this come up quite, quite a bit in our team's tests. They're naturally collaborative. They tend to lead from within a group, so inspiring both equality and congeniality. They're often committed to a venture. They put in the hard work to see it through. They're courageous advocates for people and causes they care about. So this could be a lot of the brands we see that have cause-related missions, B Corps, brands that are committed to zero waste um, recently but really being loyal to a mission or a purpose that you feel the brand is going to best execute on. Yeah. And these are definitely the people who would be connected to a brand for the long haul if they really identify with the mission. Seven. All right. The enthusiast. <laughs> this is my Enneagram type. And it was funny. I really felt this was me before I even took the exam. And then I, I won this with flying colors. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you can't win anything and no Enneagram is better than the other, but Number seven, I really resonate. This is enjoying ch chasing positive feelings by seeking out new adventures. They're very forward thinking and fast moving. So this is someone who is inspired by events and adventures and the ability to connect with others and never a dull moment, really not wanting to sit still, um, really always taking on that next task or that next thing that's thrown at them with a lot of enthusiasm. This reminds me of the brand Forever 21, just this idea that like you're always in this constant age where you're having fun, you're being excited. I think there's also a lot of, I feel like a lot of younger brands tend to skew towards this way because they're trying to hit on that life stage where maybe someone's in college or they're in their peer group and they're just constantly looking for new experiences on the weekend. Uh, but overall, this is a really interesting one to think how this translates to millennials now that they now that they're older and they have family, but they're still seeking out these positive experiences with the external world. Yeah, and we've seen some cool brands. What was that one where you can rent the the mansion? Oh, Inspirato? Yeah, Inspirato. So that's been targeted a lot on Facebook now. And this is this subscription service where you can literally rent out a mansion once a month and go on an adventure. Yeah, it's a really cool product. I'm still trying to figure out how I can get a big enough group assembled to buy this. But essentially, you pay <laughs> a membership fee and you can use it as often as you want. The only catch is that once you book a trip, you have to wait till you take the trip to book your next one. So if you book too far out, you'd obviously have to wait until that trip is completed but they have mansions and villas and five-star hotels and all these locations across the globe. Um, so a really fun concept. And part of their rationale is like, you know, just live your best life and have these fun experiences and like go beyond what you thought was possible 
for travel. Great, so let's look at the eight, the challenger. It's someone who isn't afraid of healthy confrontation. They can be champions of social justice and fight for the underdog. So this one might resonate with a lot of you on the line, especially in innovation, but it's about going against category norms or thinking about something, a new way to do something, not being afraid to kind of spin everything or break the wheel as they would say on Game of Thrones. And so there's obviously a lot of brands that attempt to do this like Tesla, you know, they don't call themselves an automotive company. They consider themselves an innovation company. Um, and just thinking about ways that you want to have like really a dent or you want to make a change. All right. Nine is the peacemaker can always see all sides to different perspectives. They like to minimize trouble and keep the peace. Yeah. So we heard a funny Enneagram joke when we had an expert come in to talk about it. And they said that a lot of nines think that it's the perfect score. Like that's what everyone's trying to get on the Enneagram. <laughs> so we thought that was kind of funny, but they're patient personalities. They're really gifted at being, seeing both sides of an issue. They connect well with others. They have a knack for putting people at ease. So you might know somebody like this at your life that just kind of fosters that more relaxing environment. I could also think of this when we think of the apps like Calm for meditation, where you're trying to just foster this well-being, you're trying to soothe everyone. And so you can see where this could be a really fun brand persona, um, especially in today's world where we feel like we're always on. So real quick, I'm just curious, um, which number, I just launched a poll, which number do you think's best? Which number should we all strive to be? And yeah, if you're wondering that, no, oh, this is kind of a trick question. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see the answers coming in and now I realize that the way the way we worded it is a little tricky because there's two correct answers. I would say they they're all the same. I mean, definitely if you go and you read the literature, they are all the same. It's so funny because as soon as we take this test, anyone who takes the test thinks that theirs is the best because you resonate with it so deeply and it makes so much sense, but it's fascinating to to interact with people every single day who are a completely different type than you. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's more about what it motivates each person versus like which one is the best trait to get. So we're going to jump now into some examples of how this resonates out in the world of marketing and advertising, but also in terms of how we can innovate differently if we were putting on these different lenses for who we feel our segment is when we're innovating for that brand specifically. So we wanted to start with the luggage category. We were thinking of away luggage, how they really, we actually read this, um, this great article. If anyone's interested, um, please email us and we'll send it to you. But it was really, a, I think it was actually a podcast about how away, when they were trying to go into the luggage category, their whole hook was on creating this lookbook where they showed people taking trips to all these glamorous destinations and what you could do with the luggage and where you're going with it. And now you can see that mirrored in the retail experience where it's just this gorgeous experience that actually inspires you to want to travel. And so they didn't start it from the approach of like, how can we innovate on the product design of luggage and make it the best possible, even though that's a huge feature because there's a charging unit in there. It's a huge feature of the product. But a lot of the reasons that people resonate with this brand is because they feel like it connects with them as a traveler, that they're going to have all these fun adventures with this luggage. And so that's one of the primary reasons someone might be personally motivated to go buy away luggage and the charging unit at that point just becomes a benefit because what could easily happen to a brand like this is that there could just be knockoffs of people that have chargers and luggage and then they wouldn't really have as much to stand on. And so that's why they've anchored in this experience first. So some of the brand traits that they have are around adventure, fun, wanderlust, wanderlust and excitement. And one of the big um, stories that they have is their founders are actually from Warby Parker and they were able to get funding for this brand just off of a lookbook. So I have no actual product concepts. So some different ways, if you were in the luggage category that you could think about if you were appealing to different segments of the Enneagram. So type two, um, some of the ways you could appeal to that segment are talking about being able to carry your own items, plus be prepared in case someone in your group runs out of a battery or space, you can save the day. So that's that helper archetype. So someone that would pride themselves on being the one in the group that could really help everyone out or always be prepared. Um, for type six, it could be that it has you covered regardless of what obstacles you run into. So picture being delayed and stuck in an airport, everything you need would be there, including charging. So just this kind of thinking about kind of the worst case scenario and having the best product to combat that. For type seven, I really feel this is who Away is going after as their core segment. 
thinking about that adventure at the drop of the hat that you're just going to have this great luggage that looks that looks perfect you're feeling inspired by the brand that they're inspiring you to want to travel because your luggage looks nice um, and they become sort of your jet setting best friend that you take with you and then type eight it might be the type would say who needs extra fills no silly extra pockets or patterns just everything you need to get from point a to p point B built to last a lifetime. And you see that because especially with this luggage, it does have that minimalistic exterior. And so it could appeal to that segment as well. So in terms of shoes, we picked Rothy's um, just because they've had so much success and they're, they're considered a very innovative brand. If you haven't heard of the product before, their shoes made out of plastic water bottles. So if you go to their website, they're really known for being innovative in the category as well as having design where if you, once you see the brand, you can instantly recognize somebody else that's wearing it. So it creates this tribe-like mentality. And they're also striving for zero waste. So that's a really popular buzzword and mission we obviously see being adopted um, in 2019. So some brand traits are being stylish, but also classic. Um, the silhouette is very classic. It's not way out there. Um, and they're also just being really innovative. Um, so type one, the reformer, so one of the reasons that this brand might appeal to them is that there's 37 million water bottles no longer going to landfills, which is clearly communicated on Rothy's website. And that purchasing these shoes is the right thing to do because performers tend to think of things that, you know, what's the right choice that I should make out of these couple options. Type four, the individualist might think that there's just an endless combinations of colors, shapes, and patterns that allow, allow you to find the perfect shoe for you. So really leading into that customized lens for what works best for me as an individual that needs this shoe for a specific reason. Type five would be the thinker. So all the research would support that this brand shows that it has a lower environmental impact and Rothy's are a solution to that, ch that challenge in the fashion industry. And then seven, so a seven enthusiast might think that, wow, this brand's so fun, it's comfortable, there's so many cute options, and the sustainability is really a bonus on top of that. So the next lens we'll put on is cosmetics. Um, so we chose Kylie Cosmetics because she is resonating with a, a very young audience. Um, and we also are, think it's pretty interesting just that Kylie's had so much success being one of the youngest female billionaires in the United States. Her brand is really known for their e-commerce strategy and also the viral social media strategy. So if you follow Kylie on Instagram, you'll see that pretty much everything she does goes viral. Um, she had that whole challenge where everyone was trying to vote that egg ahead or like that egg photo just to beat her so that she didn't have the most liked Instagram photo of all time. And she actually had a, a skincare launch lately where she decked out a jet in all pink and she had an all pink villa. So she does these like really over the top things just to go viral, which in turn gets people to want to purchase her products. Um, so for a type one, a type one, a reformer could think, wow, I'm going to have everything I need for a flawless look. It works for her. It could work for me. Um, a type two could think, wow, this is so customizable. This is a great gift idea that I can give to a friend. It's going to be one of those solutions where everyone will like it. Um, a type three could think, which is the achiever could think, wow, it's one of the fastest growing beauty brands in the world. I want to understand what makes her so successful or I'm attracted to her because of her level of success. And a type seven would think, enthusiast would think, wow, it's such a great way to have a little piece of summer vacation all of the time. So you can see those would be very different messaging to different audiences based on um, which segment that she's targeting, as well as how she could think about innovation in terms of different product formats she might want to include. So in terms of appliances, we chose the Instapot, which is now famous for having a button for almost every function you can imagine. The brand has a really massive fan base. So if you go to Pinterest, you'll see thousands of articles about how to use your Instapot for a specific diet or a specific DIY recipe. It's also known for being one of those devices that just their marketing and the way that their tribe talks about them is all about how to fit it into your life, whether you're a a busy mom or you live alone, it just seems like it can be used for almost any use case in any scenario, which has really contributed to its popularity. So some of the brand traits we're seeing them resonate is being reliable. Um, you can always rely on it. When you get home, the food's going to taste amazing because it's just had so much time to either slow cook or pressure cook. It's diverse. It can go through so many different functions and different food types. And it's also foolproof. It's really hard to mess something up because you're pushing a button. So some of the different ways that they can appeal to different segments are for type five, they could objectively Instapot cooks faster and more flavorful food than any other cooking option. So for a researcher, they could see that, wow, this is really the best option when I compare it across the line or I see how much functionality I'm getting out of it. For type six, 
be really being about the meal train champion by being able to provide a warm meal to a neighbor or friend without worrying about how it might turn out. So no fear of failure there. And for nine, it could be set it and forget it. So no extra dishes or extra time, just one machine gets the job done. And I think what's interesting is obviously these brands could hit on all of these, but when they're using their primary lens of how they could think about innovation or how for marketing, these are different lenses they could take on for um, different ways that they could approach these challenges or these different segments they're going after. So Veta Capsule, I'm actually really excited about this brand from a trend perspective. There's a lot of emerging companies online now that will sell you clothes in a capsule format. So you get between five to 10 pieces and then they show you how to make 30 different outfits. And then that might be something that you buy quarterly, seasonally, or maybe every other year. And the benefit to the consumer is that it's edited. A lot of times it's very stylish. This brand tends to also have this minimalistic vibe. A lot of the styles are very similar, um, but you get a lot of different use cases out of them. And another big brand promise that a lot of these companies have is that they're also sustainable. So you're doing your part to sort of eliminate the amount of purchases you might be making a year or per season, but then you're getting a lot of, a lot of use out of it, a lot of bandwidth. So for different consumer types, so for type four, it might be that each clothing item can be worn many ways. So providing you with the most personalized look possible. So that would be for an individualist who wants to have their own stamp on something. Um, for type six, the loyalist, this clothing is made in a family run factory in the USA. So they talk about that as part of their mission. So by purchasing, you're part of this bigger community of those who care about social and environmental impact. And then nine, it might be that it provides you everything you need for a month of hassle-free outfits. And that's enough for somebody to want to engage with that brand. So we'll go into the vitamin category next. Um, so care of is one of the, I think there's a few now that do customized vitamin supplement subscriptions. So you would actually take a quiz, you would self-select some different goals that you might have for yourself. And they're really known for their gorgeous packaging. So some of their brand traits are being personalized, being really fun, having this expertise that they're gonna be able to provide you a recommendation. So you can see some of the different Enneagram types might look at it, that they might like that one, you're getting top performance. Um, a type four might like that they get to know your goals. They get to know your history. They actually know who you are as a consumer before they're making a recommendation. And a type five might care that they've, the investigator might care that they've conducted thousands of studies to ensure that the vitamins you're getting are actually effective for your body. The next one is in the beverage category. So we have to say these are actually two of our favorite products. We actually have them behind us in the office right now. Um, so these are euphorics. Um, so both of these brands are alcohol free. And they really talk about the self-care movement and how they really turn to these ancient remedies to concoct um, this blend of adaptogens and CBD and also um, stress-relieving herbs to create something that's going to give you this good social experience. Um, so part of the brand traits are being healthy, sophisticated, also around self-care. So you can see a type one might care that's helping you take the edge off and giving your brain a much needed break, but you also don't have the negative side effects of alcohol. A type seven might like that it's allowing you to let loose and have all this fun with no consequences. So you're not going to have a hangover tomorrow. So you're not going to have to stop the party train. And a type mind might like that no matter how crazy the world around you is, they're allowing you to take a mental break. And so the last one before we dive into the giveaway and our last poll of the day is a food product. So this is IQ bar, which really hits on the nootropic trends we're seeing right now where they're providing you brain nutrients and they also are a plant-based product. And part of this is interesting because we talked about this science-based story before, but we're seeing a lot of brands really lead into this. Um, and it's also just an easy and smart decision. So you can see a type two um, might like that. It's the best way to show your child you care. You're packing something that's going to help them perform better at school, potentially. Um, sort of reminds you when breakfast, they had all that marketing or they had all that material out about how breakfast really helped you start the day in the best way possible. Um, type three might care that you're getting all the best nutrients for mind and body on the go. So no more needing to stop what you're doing to cook a meal. And then type eight might think that, wow, this is really no nonsense. You're going to power your body and mind. It's going to help you take on the world. Um, so that's that challenger perspective. That's sort of you versus the world, or you're going to be able to innovate on your own process. All right. So for our last quiz, just to see if you've been paying attention, your Enneagram number is determined by... Go ahead to the poll, your birthday, a number that seems the most fun, a number that you act like the most, or the number that you share motivations with. And while you're filling this out, I just want to remind everyone to stay on with us. I have some really exciting giveaways, a couple quizzes for those of you to take. If you haven't taken it, you can win that. I also have a, another 
book, Millennial Gram, that I'm going to be giving away. And I'll tell you why in just a second. That book's a little different than the one we did before. And one other really fun treat. So you are correct if you said D, the number you share the motivations with. And if you go to the next slide here, there are a lot of quizzes that you can take out there. You need to understand that not all of them are equal. So you might want to hit up enneagraminstitute.com if you don't win the promo code from us right now. Um, and this quiz can tell you, and it's so fascinating, the amount of content, you're going to start understanding that there's a wing and a second level number that you are, and you'll start identifying it with the people around you. And it'll really have an impact on the way you experience products and services, the way you think of the work that you do every day as an innovation and marketing leader, but then also how you function um, as, a, as a professional and as a partner um, to the people around you, possibly even as a parent. Yeah, I think it's also interesting to think about if maybe you're working for a brand where the archetype or the persona is very different from who you are personally, it could help you identify your brand's persona and the segment that you're going after and how those align or maybe even how those differ in different ways that you can think about innovation. So even what we, we talked about the luggage example, there could be so many different ways to think about how to innovate on that product, the product design or the marketing experience for that brand. But it would be so different just depending on the lenses that we're using for that, for the different segments that that brand is actually going after. Yeah. And one more note, I just want to draw your attention to that middle paragraph in the, on the top there that says the preferable way to learn your numbers by studying the Enneagram. And we actually had an Enneagram expert come to our office and tell us that there are the tests that will help guide you and illuminate what number you most likely are, but it's through true studying that you actually figure out which one you are. There's no actual just test that is a done deal. And so once you take it, you might find that, well, I'm kind of this, I'm kind of that. And that's because it's really understanding who you are. All right. So before I announce the winners, I want to let those of you who don't know us too well about the ways that you can work with EBCO. We do strategic trend investigations with, which illuminate future visions for innovation and, and product ideation new services, new products in your category. They're always tied to a strategic initiative. We do experiential trend expeditions where we bring teams of anywhere from two to four people, upwards of 80 to 100 we've had before in market to experience trends and bring them to life through a highly curated experience that brings trends to life. This is great, not only for team building, but for instant ideation and inspiration for product pipelines and forward thinking ideas. We do immersive trend workshops and ideations, which are very hand on. hands on. We do trend content and marketing and sales materials for a lot of our B2B clients, developing that thought leadership that show that you know what the trends are to gain more retail space and things like that. We have our trend of the month club, which is taken off this summer. We're doing sleep and recovery as our next trend topic. This is a monthly engagement for innovation and marketing leaders to explore a trend that we're investigating to get an in-depth report and unboxing video on the products that are taking this trend by storm. We do thought leadership and keynote speaking. And then we just launched trend pop-ins. We did our first one in Boston last week where we'll actually bring a trend topic to an organization. It's really fun as a, a lunch and learn or some form of a round table. So all different ways to engage with us. Please right now I'm launching a poll. If you're interested in learning about any of these things that EBCO does beyond our book club, we can contact you in the coming weeks and have a conversation about some of the initiatives that you might be working on or seeing if there's ways to collaborate. Um, and if those of you are saying not yet, please stay plugged into our newsletters and our book club because we are obsessed with trends. We love talking about this stuff, whether we worked together or not immediately. So again, thank you for joining us. And now I'm going to move to giveaways. So let's turn on the camera and you can see us. I wanna show you what we're giving away. So first of all, we're gonna give away this Millennial Gram book. It's called Millennial Gram. And the reason that we didn't use this book originally was because it's actually through the voice of a very millennial or centennial person. And so we <laughs> felt a little uncomfortable with the language, but it also brings to life who this person is. So we're going to give this away um, to one of our winners. And then also, if you email info at the ebco.com with your Enneagram number, we are going to send you an Enneagram poster as a PDF that you can print out, put in your office. It'll be so cute. We have these all over our office mm. based on Enneagram type. So info at the ebco.com. And all you have to say is, hi, I was on the webinar. I'm a number six. I'm a number five. I'm a number four. Send me the PDF. It's cute. It's colorful. It has really fun content on it. So mine's a seven and it says, Okay, I have major FOMO. At my best, I'm extroverted and optimistic, but at my worst, I'm scattered and distracted. 
So that's pretty <laughs> accurate. It's fun to have this around and I would love to get some of these into your inboxes. All right, so for our 10 winners of the Enneagram, if you've ever seen me do this before, I always love picking these names and let's see. We are sending a link out to Zach F. You are our first winner, Zach F. Uh -huh. Yes, followed by Will W. Will W. All right, let's keep it going. Steve F, these are not fake names. You are on and we are excited to send you this link. Steve S, yay, Steve, you always join us. Thank you so much. All right, Terry W, you're the next winner of the Enneagram. Remember, if you've already taken it, just pass it along. Courtney A, Courtney, Courtney's a mm. client of ours. We're glad that you join us. Love having you on. All right, let's see. Natalie K, Natalie mm. K, you are going to find your type. Manini M, and I saw you commenting a lot, so thank you for being so engaged, and I saw a comment about that the Enneagram types are, they're equal, but they're different, and maybe the way we worded that one pop quiz, we could have adjusted, but yes, thank you, thank you so oh, much. Oh, and also, I was going to say, if someone has taken this that has won, I believe there's a supplemental test that we could send you as well, so oh, just email us, and we'll make sure that we, we send you a different link, especially if you already know your type. Raul R. There's one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Raul, you're number eight. All right. Who else? Ah, all right. Lori S. Lori, you are going to be taking the Enneagram soon. All right. Who else do I have here? Sarah B is winner number 10. And the winner of the book is Ruth W. You are going to get a follow-up book to this. So Thank you everyone for joining us. We hope that you found it to be inspiring. We hope that you're able to implement some of these ideas. Again, we're EBCO. You can reach us at Kaylin at the EBCO, Erin at the EBCO, Info at the EBCO. We love collaborating. You'll all be informed of our next book club coming up soon. Once you're in, you're in. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm, we're seeing some really cool feedback. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's right. <laughs> I would love to know what your Enneagram type is. <laughs> Oh, everyone's I, all inspired. Yay. And it looks like we might have, so Ruth, I don't know if your hand's up on purpose or accident, but if anyone has questions, please feel free to raise your hand and we can take a few with the few minutes we have remaining. Um, and Ruth, I'll actually let you type in if you actually want us to unmute you. And we're going to leave it on for a few seconds because I can see people, um, yeah, putting some cool comments in and you might have some questions. So we're going to sign off now. Thank you so much for joining us. Great audience participation. And we'll see you at the next book club and possibly for a personal conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Have a great week.